Hello, everybody, and welcome to Style American. I'm delighted to welcome my very special guest today. Uh, is Mark Sanderson, screenwriter from LA. How are you, Mark? I'm well, thank you. And thank you for the, uh, the opportunity, the interview. It is absolutely a pleasure, actually, to uh, have you back here uh, on the show. And uh, I know that, you know, many things have happened since we, we were actually talking last time. So, and, uh, but, you know, first thing first, I would like actually to ask you uh, about uh, a new movie that is coming out on uh, Sunday night. And the movie is uh, Mother of All Lies with Francesca Eastwood. Would you like to tell me what is the movie about? Uh, yes, it's a thriller. Uh, Mother of All Lies, and it's this Sunday on Lifetime Movie Network. Check your local listings, as they say. Um, it's, it's about a young woman who uh, comes of age. She turns 18, and she is adopted, and she knows she's been, she was adopted, but she finds um, some letters from her birth mother that her parents had withheld from her and learns that um, her birth mother is in prison and is getting out on parole. So she, on her own, reconnects with the mother who uh, is a master manipulator and she gets involved behind her, her, her adopted parents' back uh, in her, her birth mother's life. And unfortunately, the birth mother um, reconnects with her old boyfriend who's complete bad news and mm -hmm. his whole crowd. And uh, it, she goes into the depths of uh, of hell, you know, but with this master manipulator. So it's really, it's really, uh, I say fun to write. It was fun in a way a thriller could be fun. Um, but the intricacy of the, you know, characters not being who they are and, the, and, you know, the subtext about what their real motivations are, that was, that was the, uh, you know, and in the relationship between, you know, both mothers and father and, and the daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's exciting. I, 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 it was, a, it was a, a screenplay assignment, which is, again, I always say is the bread and butter of working writers is assignment work. Yes. And um, it was a little, I want to say, out of my wheelhouse, but, but not, um, which was always nice to have a challenge and have it end up, you know, being a great collaboration with all, all involved, which is always nice when, when a project really fires on all cylinders with, with everybody. How was actually, you know, to, to work, you know, be, behind the scene on it, like, you know, the, say, the, you know, the, the writing part? Well, I primarily worked with the producer um, here in Los Angeles, and, it, and they filmed in Canada. So this was one, uh, several times in the past, I've been on the set because the director wanted me there, That's and it's good. been that kind of relationship. This time was not that. It was just sometimes it happens or it doesn't, mm -hmm. uh, and many times there you know, luckily there's no need for that. You don't actually want to be uh, making changes on the set because then that means there's problems. And so uh, I think, you know, the, the, uh, the concept behind it was to make it so tight that there was, it just was ready to go. You know, and many times obviously it happens, but things happen during production, but that was not the case. Uh, so it was, uh, you know, it was a little like, oh, everybody else is going off to play and I'm... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, not, I'm not involved anymore. As, well, it happens as a writer, you know, you write the it. script and you move. Yes. You're able, luckily, as a writer to then work on the next script or five more scripts or, you know, whereas a director, um, you know, I have friends who are directors and when they get on a project, sometimes it can be a year and a half of their life. You sure. Know? Yeah, that's very true. And, you, you know, I just got back from overseas working on a project that, was from a producer in Los Angeles, so I was able to work remotely, and the producer was okay with me going off and then turning in the work, but, you know, as I say, a writer, if you have a laptop and an internet connection, you know, we can go to an island and, and, and work, you know, which is fantastic. It is. So. Another thing that uh, I remember we were talking uh, some time ago was actually that you were uh, working on uh, writing a book uh, about screenwriting, and I know that the book is uh, now ready, isn't it? It's done. It's, uh, it's been done for a little while, and the only person to blame is myself. <clears throat> Excuse me, because, uh, you know, life, work got in the way. And, uh, when, and as I always say with screenplays, if you don't set up a deadline for yourself, it's just open-ended, you know. Mm -hmm. So finally, uh, the book, there it's called is. The Screenwriter's Journey to Success, 
uh, as I joke, it's four years of writing and uh, about 20 years of living mm -hmm. as into the book of my experiences, you know, surviving in the trenches in Hollywood and disciplines that I've learned from, from uh, you know, people who I've been blessed to work with, Academy Award nominated producers, you know, actors who've been nominated for Academy Awards and, you know, and, you know, gleaming off from these people and learning things from them and then, you know, as you transition and move to a level, now you're working with them and hopefully, you know, you move up and, and so this book is sort of a reaching back and, and pulling up aspiring screenwriters to try to say, hey, there's a lot of pitfalls in this business and maybe if you learn one, uh, if you take one nugget of information out of this that saves you time and, and you know, and maybe it's, you know, I, I've helped and it, it feels good to, uh, to offer that up. So the book is, um, but the crazy thing about a book is now everyone says, you have to start writing the next one. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, the next one? And you're joking, right? And I go, no, you have to have a follow-up and then one after that. And it's the same as, you know, with screenplays. Yes, yes, I know what you mean. Well, but, but you know, first of all, let's be happy with the, the first one that, that yes. you wrote. And uh, uh, also, you know, uh, I would say it will be actually very nice if we say the title once again. So it's... Uh, yes. Um, a screenwriter's journey to success. Very good. Tips, tricks, and tactics to help you survive as a working screenwriter in Hollywood. And this will be available uh, on Amazon. You were saying. Yeah, on Amazon. Uh, yeah. In the next few months, I'll be okay. uh, you know tweeting about it and doing all the social media things um, Very about good. it. Very yeah. Good. And you know, while you were actually writing the book. Um, you know, what was, say, the, the big challenge for you in, in terms of, you know, uh, thinking how to structure it and, you know, like, which kind of topics, like, to write about? Right. Well, you know, I have to say my, bl my blog helped immensely with that in getting that out. And because I think if I sat down and said, I'm going to write a book, it would just be overwhelming. Like, where, where do you even start? So I kind of, through using the blog, I snuck up on the book. You know, I didn't realize that at a certain point I said, wow, wait a minute. And then it was also, you know, remembering back to different places of the last 20 years up till now yeah. of certain meetings. And it's not just a book about, oh, this is, it's using experiences as examples, you know, mm -hmm. real life examples, not just a, uh, a memoir, right. so to speak. You know? yeah. And it, so then after that, I started saying, okay, each of these goes into a different chapter and should, and now chapters should be created. And then I just didn't want it to be dumped information. I wanted it to be, like I said, a screenwriter's journey. So mm -hmm. the book starts with the introduction about how I started in filmmaking, you know, oh, as, yes. as a, as a preteen mm -hmm. making films uh, in our little circle on the west side of Los Angeles. We had J.J. Abrams and, and Larry Fong, who's a big cinematographer, and, and uh, Matt Reeves, who's my dear friend, and he's just gone up to shoot the next Planet of the Apes movie. Yep. So we were all... A collective of, of filmmaker nerds, you know, as you would say, you know, uh, and every year we'd, we'd all make a film and, and we had this big uh, screening at the New Art Theater here in Los Angeles and the LA Times came and did a big piece and, and you know, you go back the next morning to, to high school and there's people with the paper going, look, your picture's in the, in the what? What are you kidding me? So uh, good, yeah. And then from there going on to, and in, in getting into film school, the struggle of that, Mm -hmm. And then, of course, getting out of film school and thinking they would hand me a diploma and a three-picture deal, you mm -hmm. know. <laughs> so th there is one first struggle with film school and then another struggle starting the career. I know. <laughs> yeah, the, re the real world, you know, yeah. and, and always, uh, so it charts that course and then it goes into, you know, so I try, and then, and then it goes up right to uh, today, yes. you know, what's happening now and then, uh, which I had... I must admit, things of the last 10 months have been, you know, I've had two films booked to make it extremely up-to-date, you know. Absolutely. And I also tried to make the book up-to-date where, you know, when you read it, it won't be dated because the information is, you know, is all, some of it is timely information, you sure. know. You have to write every day, you know, you must write every day, okay. <laughs> but when you start to put information about specific years and dates, you know, that will at some point have to be changed. But the great thing about you can do another uh, publishing, Absolutely. you know, an update. Yeah, and that's what you so were it's saying exciting. before, I'm... like the, the second book. <laughs> the... Exactly. Yeah. I think, you know, I've seen, I think the second book, I'll take a rest and I'll interview my friends. That would be awesome, yeah. 
this would be great. Because I, you know, I'm sure you've seen books that are, you know, the editor is a writer, and then they go out and say, how did you make it, or how did you start? And, you know, you just sit back and listen to your, and then, you know. <laughs> well, you know, you know that would be the second one. That's actually what uh, Francois Truffaut did with Alfred Hitchcock. Yes, I have that, yeah. I have right in my, uh, that's a, a book from film school I have yeah, on my uh, that's bookshelf. that's in my collection too, <laughs> a classic. <laughs> so if he, if he did it, then I can do it. Yeah, Why that's not? it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, okay. Next thing I would like to ask you is actually um, I know that there is a, another movie that you wrote that um, was actually just uh, wrapped like last month, isn't it? Yes. And uh, it, the title for it is Mummy's Little Girl. Would you like to tell me something about it? Uh, yes, just vaguely I can speak a, sure. about it. I, I'm the co-writer, okay. and uh, it's it's another thriller which uh, was great to come off from one, one genre and go right into the next one. Um, and yes, that wrapped in August, and it stars uh, Fiona uh, Gubelman. She was in um, that TV show Wilfred. She's been in a lot of, a lot of movies. Right, yes, yeah. Uh, and it's, uh, I believe it'll be out either closer to the end of the year or, or in January. Okay. So the more um, information that one is allowed to say, usually once when something is on IMDb, then you know you can speak about it. But I otherwise, know. you can't. yes, yes. So uh, anyway, we will be looking forward to it, and we, we will yes. be checking your Twitter account so that we, we know yes. when the movie will be out. But it was nice the past, like like I tell um, aspiring screenwriters, you know, you yeah. have you, uh, good times and bad during your writing, you know, career during the long haul. And it's like a roller coaster, and many times you you have a good several years, and other times there's some dry times, you know. But it's the it's the key is to stay um, in the game. Of course, you know, uh, by creating material that someone you care about, but that you can get someone else to care about. Mm -hmm. So the last ten months, you know, having two films produced has been fantastic. You know, so uh, it's, it's yeah, a definitely. You know, I always say, I'm humbled by the craft. Yeah. Because even after writing 28 screenplays, it's still, you know, a master uh, martial artist is still learning. You know, mm -hmm. it's still a learning process. And if you don't think that way, uh, you know, I always say to, to writers, you will be humbled uh, by the craft and by the film business. Because, mm -hmm. as I say, this latest film on Sunday, I wrote it last year. So things take time. You know, even a contract takes time to go back and forth between sure. it could take a month and a half. And yeah. I think people... I think uh, many aspiring screenwriters think, you know, it's like, okay, the next day, you know, the world changes. No, that, that's you know. not the way it is, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, it, it's, it, it's like I say, it's amazing to have a film reach an audience, you know, that's the idea. Uh, but the very next day you wake up and you look around, you're like, well, the bills still have to be paid and <laughs> I still have to make breakfast. And uh, I've got to do these things, i got to go to the bank, and, you know, it's like, you know. Well, um, that, that's life, you know. And, it is. Course, yeah. and that's why I kind of, like, you know, screenwriting is a job. It's not, you know, especially for the screenwriter, it's not fame, fortune, and glamour. No. You know, it's not parties, Prosecco, and premieres. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, a, it's hard work. It's sacrifice. It's a lot yeah. of effort. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. You have to really, you know, that's why I ask, the number one question I ask writers, why do you want to write screenplays? Mm -hmm. And I okay. wait for an answer. Mm -hmm. They say, well, because uh, I like movies. Okay, you know, um, I like to drive across bridges, but I don't build bridges, you know, or whatever, whatever it is, you know. <laughs> not, but, uh, and then that separates, you know, the person who really wants to do it and will not give up. Mm -hmm. I think David Mamet, there's a quote, he said, you're just the person who will not go away. Breath, when they, you'd be writing when they put the nails in the coffin, you know. And that's, I think, I think that's, writers are really, a different breed because they're writers they love to do what they do that's you know and sometimes enough. sometimes producers love what they do but they're not writers you know mm -hmm. they're they're the, they, they have a different you know ability otherwise they'd be writing right they, they, they have uh, say a more uh, business uh, oriented mind yes. and, and of course you know that's their job and, and you know it's yes. great that they do that so uh, it is uh, actually, you know, uh, very important that, you know, everyone has uh, his own work in the film industry because, uh, 
you know, there is, of course, the, the screenwriter does, you know, the, the most important job, which is the one of writing the movie, then right. the, the director is the one who actually uh, sure. realize, you know, the movie. So, like, you mm -hmm. know, from paper into, you know, uh, the actual final product. And, of course, the producer is uh, the one who orchestrates all, all of this, yes. so we can say. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, everyone is uh, uh, absolutely uh, necessary if, to, yes. to actually make the film a success. And uh, so then, in the end, it's like, you know, everyone is working for the, the same target. So. Yeah, the same exactly, and mm -hmm. and um, everyone has their place, and it's it's great when you work on a project, which has been, you know, all my experience. I've been very lucky that everyone, you know, the directors have allowed me to be the writer. Mm -hmm. You know, they say you're the writer, and I'm like, oh, you're right. You know, because sometimes you can, you know, and they say I will allow you. We're collaborating, but I'm going to allow you to go off and do it. I'm not going to just dictate and write on a piece of paper, and you're transcribing as if you were a transcriber, you know, that's not a collaboration. That's just mm -hmm. do this. Yep. But I, I've been very blessed that the directors I've worked with have been collaborators and they appreciate the writer. But again, the screenplay is a hundred pages, hopefully that's, it, it's just words on paper until, you know, it's a blueprint to go make something. Exactly. And so I always tell writers, you have to give the director what they need, he or she, the director to do their job. You know, so as you're writing, you have to, you know, pull, as a writer, pull yourself out and think of the bigger picture. Like you said, we're trying to get this made, not, exactly. oh, uh, it, you, it becomes not about me or it becomes about the project. Absolutely. That's the way it is. And uh, yeah. one thing that I know is that, uh, you, you know, because of, of the character of yours, you know, that, that you, you are such a good professional and, you know, a, a person who can actually, you know, network very well and interact very well with people. I know that, you know, there are many directors who have been working with you that, you know, usually talk, uh, you know, b between them and if, if they meet each other and say well about you. And I think that's something very, very good. Yes, that goes back to the, the reputation aspect. Yes, yeah. Uh, two directors, I tell the story that two directors I've worked with separately were in Canada editing their next movie. And they said, ah, they knew each other professionally. They weren't great friends, but they knew each other. So they started talking. So what did you do last? I did that. And my name was brought up by both of them. Mm -hmm. And they said, what a great pleasure it was and blah, blah, blah. And then one called me and said, hey, I ran into the, and we, I was, you guys talked about me, you know, and, and you know. And that meant my reputation was out there working for me, which exactly. is what you build up with your integrity. And mm -hmm. that's what you want because one director actually is, I have three or four projects that I have with him that were separate from when we met, when the producer, you know, on that one project that, you know, he was the director of, the producer said, oh, hi, here's the writer. You guys work on it together. Mm -hmm. But then separately, which is amazing, he's become a collaborator. There you go. You know, so that's the opportunity when you collaborate to go off a project when it's done and then form those relationships that go on and on. And yes, who knows what happens. We pitch things. Not everything that you write or will write is going to sell, but it's to have, you know, material out there all the time, you know, it, because the 10 scripts that are out there, it's like a horse race, you know, mm -hmm. they'll all be at different stages and this horse might go all the way and win and these five just didn't make it. You know, I've, I've, I like projects. what you say. What you're saying very much. You know, it's a, a beautiful, uh, say, representation that you're giving about it. So yeah, it's cool. It's like a, it's it, it's. Uh, I have five projects that I say in development. Development mm -hmm. help. They're production ready. The scripts I've been paid. We got it to the point, and you know, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, global marketplace changes. Their buyers said we're not making this type of film. So yeah. it's a lot easier not to make a movie and save all that money than to make a movie and, and not be able to sell it. Absolutely. Or an actor falls out that they were going to get financing for. <clears throat> all these factors that are beyond my control as the writer. Mm -hmm. Not that it's a bad script. I, in fact, I weep sometimes because I'm like, it's such a, you know, I did such good work on it and it's sitting there on a shelf. Can I buy it? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and that's not to say maybe someday it comes around again, but you know, Early on, I learned that not every project, even when you're paid, is going to be made. So okay. you have to move on to the next one and the next one, and you just keep, you know, it's, that, it's a changing the point of view than being destroyed every time. Mm -hmm. 
in your soul and you creatively, you're just destroyed, you know, because it is a business. And you want to keep that creative, wide-eyed kid like I still try to be, that 11-year-old kid, like, oh, I went to see a movie the other night and I sat down and I was, I'm like, take me, I'm ready. Even though yeah. I know how it all works, I don't want to know how it works. You know, when no. I sit down and if they hide the plot points and it makes it all natural, I appreciate it so much. You, you want you to know. give this enthusiasm in, in you, say. Yeah, it, when yeah. you're being crushed by the reality of the world or the film business and you go, no, no, I fight against that. So if you, if you keep that little place inside your creative you know, heart that's still that, you know, the kid that loves movies, you know, and mm -hmm. it's hard mm -hmm. because when it, it becomes your job, hard. there's other things involved. Like you have to pay your bills and, and what happens, you know, becomes a, a, such a part of your life that your life is affected by it. Mm -hmm. You don't have a day job where you go, oh, I'll write this weekend. Nah, I won't. You know, like I must because it's due, it's a deadline, you know, but it's all great. I mean, the, the, what makes it great is like Sunday night when the movie premieres and we're going to have a, a premiere party with friends, which is always a, right, a yeah. it's always an interesting, uh, you know, seeing it with an audience that you know, because they can ask you questions, which I hate. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer like everyone what? Shut everyone shut up and watch the movie and don't ask me any questions. Okay. And to this point, I still have friends who go, I mean, I've done this for a long time, and they know. They go, so what part of this did you write? Just the dialogue? And I go, no, not the dialogue. You know the first scene? Yeah. You know what happens? Right. I wrote that. And then the next scene. And you know, then they don't get it because they don't know what goes into yes. screenwriting. Yes, I understand. And I go, the actors don't make up the dialogue either. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 so sometimes... You know, and, and I always believe a first impression of watching a movie is really important it because, it, you know, it's the first time. When you see it in, in repeat viewings, okay, but, but I almost like, you know, I don't want to sit alone and watch the film, no. But if it was in a theater, I would go alone with an audience that, that I don't know. And I've been in theaters where my movies have played, and it's, nobody knows who I am. Mm -hmm. But then you hear the laughs or the things that are working, and it's almost like you're undercover and you can sneak out and nobody knows, you know. And that's, you know, a beautiful part of actually, you know, enjoying a movie from my point of view, because, you know, the fact that you can share emotions with the other people that are in the same room, like even you know, if everyone is silent, but, you know, but then you hear maybe somebody laughing or, you know, somebody like having some kind of reaction. That's, I think, a very, very important part of fruition and, you know, viewing, yes. actually. Absolutely. And then I get to explain why something happened. I go, well, here's the reality of why that shot was put in, you know, mm -hmm. so they don't, they don't get to have that uh, if they just watch it by themselves. I know, yeah. If they go in a movie theater and you go, why did that work? Well, there were, you know, I can tell them the realities, not to defend my writing, just the reality of how the house was built. Sure, sure, I understand it. Why they had to put in a swimming pool when I didn't have it originally, you know. <laughs> of course. Which, which sounds like being uh, defensive, but uh, I remember watching another film uh, on TV with a bunch of friends, and they're like, well, and I go, first of all, you know, here's the reason why it was put in, and I had to explain it to them. I go, let's, let's talk about it later, because the movie's still running, you know, I mean, let's not, you know, this discussion. Yes. Unless you want to put it on TiVo and we replay it, you know. One, right. other, one other thing that uh, I would like to ask you is actually, um, you know, the, the great work that you've been doing on social media. Like, uh, we've met uh, on Twitter a few years ago and, you know, since then, like, you know, we've been interacting for, from a long time now. And uh, uh, you're doing a great job, I have to say, on Twitter and, of course, you know, on uh, your website and on, on your blog. I know that there are many, many articles there about screenwriting which are all great and I suggest everyone to go and take a look uh, and now there is also something new which is actually not really new because you were already doing videos like on YouTube and Vine I remember but yeah. I know that from a few months you are on Periscope and you know would you like yes. to tell me a bit you know uh, about you know your social media experience so far Yes, live on Periscope, which, which you're on Periscope as well, doing amazing uh, work. Um, your 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 Tisha scopes, Thank you, you know, are. It's not about just uh, this morning. I'm having my coffee. Oh look, it's Lavazza from Italy. No, it's yeah. But I have to say something. I am on Periscope actually, thanks to you, because. Uh, <laughs> 
a few months ago you told me, Tisha, why don't you know why don't you try this new media and you know try and get on Periscope and so on. So I have to say thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, you're welcome. <laughs> Sharing the love. Um, yes, Periscope. I, I just did my hundredth scope yesterday. Right. And wow. trying to gain more followers, but I thought of it as a great um, way to get the script tips across to people, to followers. And the great thing with Periscope, if people don't know it, it's from Twitter. Mm -hmm. Twitter owns Periscope. And your followers can actually uh, be notified when you're on live. It's live broadcast, it's Periscope, and then it archives it for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And there are ways that you can archive the uh, video yourself and you can dump it wherever you want. I put the videos, if they're really good, I put them on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, you know, but like you, I like to stick to the brand. You know, in, in that world, it's not sure. go outside of the brand. Mm -hmm. um, and I did some scopes from overseas, you know, interesting walking around. And, them. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. From, um, but it's good. I, I, and I enjoy the interaction where people from all over the world can type in, and ask questions, and you answer them. Uh, you know, on the screen. Um, so that's been a great uh, way to reach out and interact. Because, you know, when you make a video and put on YouTube, you see the hits or the likes, and you go, wow, four likes, that's it? And, you know, you don't really know if, and then somebody sends a question maybe by email, but it's that interaction. And so I also like with my blog that the number of people who follow, yeah. you know, when I write an article, they receive it because they want it. Mm -hmm. You know, several hundred people with a push of a button get the article. You know, uh, and so it's about, you know, the social media, I, I say to screenwriters, they say, why do I need a web page or what? Because you need, you're not going to hand somebody, you know, a resume or something. You say, here's my business card, you know, a good business card, by the way, not printed on computer paper, which no. I did a post about that. It was <laughs> one time I received a business card from someone that, you know, you, your, your image is everything. Yes, and it is. So the image you project, someone will believe until they find out otherwise. And it's not, you don't want to project a fake image or something that's false. You want to have the goods to back it up by solid screenplays. But if you hand someone a, a printed card from your computer, mm -hmm. I, I, immediately I'm like, uh-oh. No, you know, absolutely. You, you, didn't, you didn't take the time to have a card designed or printed? Are you kidding me? You yeah. know. So then that has to go to your website where you can keep people up to date and they can find you. And as people know, the more content you create, Google loves it, and you start to be blah, 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 blah. So then when I look on Google, I type my name, you know, or I type ScriptCat. It's just all the stuff, and it, because I've been putting out content, content, content. Exactly. You know, give it away, mm -hmm. give it away. Mm -hmm. And as we say, as they always say, give it away for free until you charge for it. At some point, at, you know, so the book, yes, you have to buy the book. Uh, this is the part after, you know, many years of free stuff. This is the book. It's not going to be that expensive, but um, and then I have a webinar that is archived, and so that's on. Um, you can go to the link to my website, five o'clock blue dot net, and the webinar is uh, broken into two parts, and you can rent it for two weeks and stream. Okay, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's only fourteen ninety nine, which I think wow. is a fantastic price, um, and it's a screenwriter's checklist. 10 questions every screenwriter must answer to stay in the game. And actually, uh, it's it's on PivotShare, which is a great site. And you just put in your credit card and rent it, you know. Um, and I preferred the rental rather than the purchase. That was just a choice. And I've done a webinar for the writer's store before as well. And that, that's archived with them. But this one is one that I own. The writer's store, you know, if you do a uh, webinar, they own it. Oh, yes. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. It's like a work for hire. They own it. They own the rights. You know, you get a you get a, a little bit. But I thought, you know, I'm going to do another webinar. You know, and it's so, the same information. So again, if our viewers would, would like actually to uh, find your webinar, they can go onto your website and then find the link from that. No, so from correct, correct. Uh, five o'clock blue dot net, and then you can find a link. All right, yes. One word five f i v e, you know, o'clock blue. It's not no apostrophe dot net. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And that's a one-stop shop, and that's why I tell writers, you want someone to be able to go to your website, and you don't have to, they don't have to ask any questions about what you're doing. You mm -hmm. keep it updated, you have your bio, you have your filmography, you have maybe some video of projects, um, and, and, and it provides all the links. It's a one-stop shop, and, and so there's the link there. And then I have a mobile app, a free mobile app, that uh, I decided to create before the book came out, and there's... 
tips that I've taken from the book while writing, you know, okay. little pieces of advice that you get in, in the day. And so if you download the app, it's free from Yap. It's not on the Apple Store. You have to, again, the link is on my website. You mm -hmm. download the app and you put Yap's folder onto your phone and then you put my app in it. And twice a week, generally, I send out script tips. And so in your, in your updates, all of a sudden, boop, you know, and you'll be in so many times. Uh, I've run into people I know and they say, you know, and I didn't even know they downloaded my app. And they said, you know that I was really struggling that day with, and this little piece of advice came. I said, you, you have my app? And they go, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm there you go. Yeah. so happy that someone, you know, and the numbers are, are increasing with people, you know, downloading it and keeping it. That's the key. Well, and so I think that's, that's very interesting because, you know, sometimes people might have a moment where, you know, they lack of inspiration or, or, you know, they might be a bit in doubt. And, you know, what you're saying is great because, you know, in this way they, they might find, you know, say the key that they need in that moment. Yes. And, I, you know, if I can help in some small way, but for me also to put that continues back in, in you know, you know, with my disciplines which I, you know, sometimes fall away from, you know, and they go, and then someone joked to me, they said, you know, you really should read this one blog. I'm like, oh, really? And they said, yeah, it's called My Blank Page. And I went, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I follow my own disciplines. I, I, you know, I fall off the wagon sometimes, people. I, you know, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we all do, we all do. Because the app, um, it also is a one-stop shop. So it has my videos it has links to the YouTube it has links to everything so I wanted an app that was script cats you know screenwriting guru it's a one-stop shop app it's free that's the good thing yes. and I didn't want advertising yes you know um, and so it was a perfect fit and I thought why don't I come up with an app which is cool that that coordinates with the book you mm -hmm. know so and and it's just ongoing and so yeah you know I ran into a friend and she's a comedian and she says oh you sent out that you got my app she goes, yeah I was, I was just struggling. You had this little inspirational advice. And I was like, oh, thank you. You know, that, that's great when you hear stuff like that. I know, know yes. So, so. Mark, I, I'm really, really, uh, you know, uh, uh, happy that, you know, you, we had this uh, chat, you know, to, to catch oh, up yes. with what you're doing because, uh, uh, you know, there is actually a lot boiling in, in the pot at the moment for you. It's and very uh, <laughs> And, uh, you know, uh, I really would like to uh, thank you for being with us today. Thank and, you. Uh, yes. And uh, you keep per we're going to keep periscoping, right? Absolutely, <laughs> we will. <laughs> <laughs> but thank and, you so much for the time and, and the interview. It's great to, re like you said, to reconnect with you. And, uh, and you're, you're doing a great service. And, and all the content that, that you're doing is, you know, you build up to a thing and you just keep keep it going and, and it's great the people that we get to meet right you know all the creative people I know yeah and anyway you are welcome here uh, anytime you know so all right tomorrow at 10 I, I would you <laughs> <laughs> let's do that I don't know right. talk about, but I can talk for 10 hours so you got to shut me down you know <laughs> maybe when the next movie comes out we'll do another one and, and then you know we'll see how the how the book's doing <laughs> exactly thank you so much again and we'll talk to you soon okay